Hello and welcome to our National Day Celebration Program. I'd like to wish His Majesty, our beloved King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, the Prime Minister, the Crown Prince, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and all of Bahrain a very happy National Day from all of us at Bahrain International. We wish Bahrain further progress and prosperity and to all its people good health and happiness. Our first guest is a prominent figure of the Kingdom of Bahrain and has held a number of major roles throughout his career, both regionally and internationally. He was a member of the Shura Council for over a decade and also a member of the Council of Commissioners of the National Institution for Human Rights and is the current president of the Gulf Petrochemical Industries Company. Dr. Abdurrahman Jawahiri, thank you for joining us today in the studio. Thank you. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here and I too uh, would like to wish uh, our leadership and the people of Bahrain a very happy National Day. Dictor, uh, as I mentioned previously, you have a variety of roles that you've fulfilled over the years and a number of things that you've achieved over the years. There are many things that I'd like to ask you about. But uh, I think firstly, I'd like to begin with a topic that I think is very relevant currently and uh, a topic that I feel isn't spoken about enough. And it's his uh, women's empowerment and the activism of women in the country, in our country. So, Dr. Sure. what do you think on this topic? Where does Bahrain stand on the terms of women's empowerment? Um, first, we have to go back. I think Bahraini women over the years and centuries and decades have enjoyed a very prominent role. Uh, Bahraini women have been leaders in education, in health, in uh, financial sectors. Uh, however, over the last uh, two decades since His Majesty the King uh, since 18, month, uh, 18 years ago, have taken the reign uh, in Bahrain and based on his uh, progressive program and democratization, Bahrain women have really leapfrogged uh, their uh, positions and have really achieved significant uh, milestones. Of course, with the establishment of the Supreme Council for Women uh, in 2001, August 2001, headed by Her Royal Highness Sheikh Sibika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, uh, Bahrain has seen tremendous program, uh, progress in the field of uh, women activity. What we have done over the last, uh, I will say, 16 years, Bahraini women enjoyed prominent uh, position in the society of Bahrain. Bahrain society has been open uh, over the years, and they have been uh, involved in all sorts of work. But since the His Majesty the King and Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika, uh, Bahraini women have enjoyed an institutional, uh, in institutionalized progress. Progress with a plan in order to uh, empower them in different fields from the traditional fields. And uh, I was extremely pleased uh, when I heard His Majesty the King in the last uh, opening of the Parliament session uh, uh, recently saying that we're not talking about empowering women in Bahrain the traditional way. We have surpassed and overcome that. We are talking now about giving the Bahraini women leadership uh, positions in not traditional but in all fields mm -hmm. of life. Uh, we have seen Bahraini women taking over ministerial roles. We have seen Bahraini women being judges. The first judges, female judges in the GCC country actually has been Bahraini. Wow. And we are extremely proud of that. We have seen Bahraini women uh, in engineering, in the field of law, in the field of education, in the field of uh, higher educational field, universities, in the field of research and development, in the field of uh, financial activities. And of course, the program is to empower them to be more in the commerce and uh, uh, support the Bahraini economy. Mm -hmm. This is really where we need now Bahraini women uh, to, to lead, to be entrepreneurs, establish their own businesses, uh, employ men and women uh, uh, to be at uh, higher skills, uh, for example, managerial levels, uh, we need them to be in directorship levels, we need them to be in the board of director uh, level. But I have, uh, of course, m our company 
uh, have worked very closely with the Supreme Council uh, for Women. Of course. And uh, what we have seen is that although we had program before and we supported women, and we are very proud to have had, for example, this year is the year of uh, uh, women in engineering. Engineering, celebrating we have had for Bahraini Women's Day, yes. That's right. We, we just uh, recently celebrated that. And uh, GPIC had a woman engineer since 1980, 1980 81. Wow. We had three uh, lady engineers working at GPIC during the construction. Babco had uh, female engineers. Alba had female engineers. Betelco had female engineers. So we have had all women have been part of our uh, progress. However, it was not institutionalized. Mm -hmm. Now we have set of criteria. We have, uh, for example, the Equal Opportunity uh, Council or committees that have been set with the support of the Supreme Council for Women mm -hmm. in organizations and in all ministries. So we are not talking about the government sector. We are also talking about the private sector. Mm -hmm. uh, we have institutionalized our work towards women. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, given criteria, scientific criteria. It is not numbers. We're not talking about numbers. We're talking about the quality of training we are giving women. We are giving, uh, talking about uh, uh, women participating in delegations, women participating in committees, women participating in the leadership activities, women actually receiving high quality training, women receiving higher education in order to position them to take the leadership uh, and executive roles. All that to be honest, we did not have until the establishment of the Supreme Council for Women. They have set us, uh, set and given us criteria in which we have to work with, a very methodical uh, way in order to even assess our own progress year by year, and they do assess us. And so uh, Bahraini women have uh, uh, really contributed sig significantly, I will say, to the development of Bahrain but still they need uh, a lot of support in order to progress even third further and take uh, more leadership roles in both the public sector as well as the private, private sector. sector. So in your opinion, the national plan for the advancement of the Bahraini women has played a major role in the advancement. The, it has actually advanced these women and their roles in society. It has been critical. I think without that, we still would have worked ad hocly. Uh, now we are working every year, concentration is on the uh, specific sector. I know that uh, Her Royal Highness, uh, Princess Sabika, is involved personally in day-to-day -day activities of the Supreme Council for Women. Uh, the Secretary General of the Supreme Council, both uh, Stada Lulwa Al Awadi and now uh, Hala uh, Al Ansari, mm -hmm. they work extremely closely with all the leadership of the ministries in the public sectors, uh, with the government authorities, as well as with the private sectors. They uh, they encourage us. They uh, see our programs. They give us guidance and support in order to see how we can best serve women. And doctor, as you previously mentioned, the theme for this year's Bahraini Women's Day is women in engineering. So this is a field where it's mostly male dominated all over the world, not just in the Gulf. And when people think of an engineer, they think of a man. And you stated that your company was one of the first companies in the Gulf since the 1980s to involve women engineers in the workforce. So in your opinion, as an engineer, what does that mean to you? How, wh how does that symbolize the modernism of the Kingdom of Bahrain? I will say because Bahrain society is an open society mm. and has been an open society, but with the push of the leadership, with the push of the Supreme Council, they have gained confidence. The confidence is really what makes, uh, tilts the balance. Today, the female engineers know that there is the highest level of the country, leadership of the country is behind them. Their yes. success will be enjoyed and will be celebrated by the leadership of Bahrain. I've had a uh, uh, pleasure of being in the presence of His Majesty the King, of the, His uh, Royal Highness the Prime Minister, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, the Royal Highness uh, uh, Amira Sibika, 
Princess Sabika, all of them actually are advocate, sincere advocate in giving the women uh, the role that they deserve in our society. Uh, doctor, uh, women's rights is a very important issue, but it's only a small part of what is human rights. So I think human rights is a widely misunderstood topic, especially in our region, especially with current events that are going on internationally. Manama is the headquarters of the Arab Court for Human Rights, and I believe that's a recognition and an honor, not just regionally, but from international standards. It's an indication of Bahrain's advancements in this respect. What are your thoughts on the matter, since you are an expert in this? Well, I, I wouldn't call myself an expert. I would. But <laughs> I think, uh, Shog, you are really bringing up an extremely important subject. I'm an engineer, to be honest. And I had the honor of being in the Shura Council for three terms, 12 years. And there we were uh, working on legislations. But when uh, His Majesty the King appointed me uh, in 2015 uh, in the uh, National uh, Institute uh, for Human, Human Rights, Rights. Uh, Council of Commissioners, mm -hmm. I saw a completely different prospect of life. To be honest, something that although maybe subconsciously I was aware of, but consciously I was not aware of. For me, human right meant political rights. And I think if today you do a survey in all the Arab world, not only in Bahrain, in all the Arab world, they think that human right is political right. This is not true. Human right has seven, eight major pillars Education, providing education fairly to the citizens. Uh, uh, equal opportunity, equal pay, child welfare, um, housing, uh, environment, economic opportunities and development, job development. All these are requirements of human rights charter. And the political right is one element out of that eight or nine pillars that constitute the Charter of Human Rights. Bahrain has excelled, to be honest. If we're talking about education, Bahrain had education since 1917 uh, mm -hmm. for females in, since 1927. Uh, healthcare, Bahrain had hospitals uh, in uh, early 1990s. Uh, we have uh, housing, uh, every Bahraini citizen uh, below certain income uh, is supported by the government, either a loan or a land or given uh, a, a house or a flat. Uh, even now divorcees have the right uh, for housing, for example. Uh, if we talk about environment, Bahrain has one of the strictest environmental laws uh, controlling uh, the industry, controlling the specifications of machinery that enters uh, into Bahrain. All these constitutes uh, part of the human rights. So Bahrain is doing extremely well in all this front, including the political rights. I think over the last two decades and since uh, his Majesty the King uh, started his democratization uh, program in 1999. Uh, 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 mm -hmm. uh, Bahrain has seen a significant development. Today we have a parliamentary system, uh, we have free election. Uh, I myself have practiced that for 12 years. I was absolutely free to uh, uh, voice my opinion to uh, make changes to the law, convince my colleagues uh, in both chambers of what is the best. And some of the best laws have been uh, produced during this uh, period. All these are part of democratization and part of the human rights. You've made excellent points today, Doctor. Thank you so much for being here with us and for raising this issue, helping us to make people aware of the King's uh, development and his vision for the future of not just women, but all Bahraini citizens and even people that visit Bahrain, the foreigners that we have here sure. who are like our brothers and sisters. So thank you so much, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, thank you for watching and we'll be back after this break.
Yeah.